All right. I always like to begin with something super interesting. And how much do you think a check, a $175 check written by Steve Jobs is worth today? Oh. It's <laughs> worth more than $175, by the way. Um, the reason why I bring this up is that it's now being auctioned off. But we have to go back in history just a little bit. Uh, it's the year of Apple's founding, and it has Apple's first ever address on it, the location of an answering service. Yes. Do you remember those? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> and it was also a mail drop for Apple when Steve Jobs was working out of his mom and dad's garage. And the checks made out to Crampton, Remke and Miller. Um, that's a management firm that provided a whole bunch of consulting services to tech companies in the mid 70s. And yes, it has Steve Jobs official autograph signature on the check. Mm -hmm. It's very, very rare. So how much do you think this check is going to go for? What do you think, Matt? Uh, I don't know. Two hundred thousand dollars. Going what do you high. think, Al? I was going lower. I was going to say 25. Uh, right now, it's still being auctioned off, and it's about $63,000. Okay, baby. I went too high. Ooh, I went too high. That's right. <laughs> you know, some say that Steve Jobs, he just died way too young. I mean, he wasn't in his prime. Now, others say it was simply a homage to Apple's attitude towards battery life. Ooh, oh. Too soon? Too Ooh. bad? Too soon. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, listen, it's Friday, and that means it's time for another wonderful episode of Kim Commando Today. Now, this is not the Kim Commando show that I host Monday through Friday on, you know the drill, on over 425 top stations. And then, of course, you can hear it on American Forces Network Radio, which I think is so cool that it's 375,000 American service men and women in 175 different countries. And 200 ships at sea. I just find that astounding, get the Kim Commando Show, because this is the Friday show. It's electrifying. It's magnificent. And joining me, as always, are two powerhouses over at commando.com and also part of the whole Commando 2.0 newsletter realm. First up, we have our amazing content queen, Allie Seligman. Hi there, Allie. What's on with you today? Hello. Uh, bad news, Allie. She's here. Oh. But as always to share some wisdom and make sure that you don't get scammed because QR code scams are going crazy right now. I'm also gonna share what I think is the most underrated feature in your browser and I bet you're not using it. Mm -hmm. Ooh and how about you, our magnificent millennial and our very own internet scout, Matthew Heffel, what are you gonna pass along? You know, I'm gonna go with good news, Matt. Um, I got a heartwarming <laughs> story about social media as well as how to change the name of your router to protect yourself and I'm going to talk to you about speed running. Now, you, know, you don't know what that is, but I'll, I'll tell you all about it. Hmm. What's it called? Speed? speed running. Speed running. And it doesn't involve Can't walking. Ever done that. <laughs> it does not. Nope. It does? No, not it does not. Not at all. Okay, all right. Boy, that's a good tease, Matt. Even I'm going to hang around for that. <laughs> uh, if you're looking for a new way to enjoy the Kim Commando Today podcast, we are waving to you right now over at youtube.com slash Kim Commando. This way you can watch us do the podcast. It's a whole visual element. Once again, that's youtube.com slash Kim Commando. And we're going to get started with the news already. And of course, I'm going to go first. And here's something that's been on everybody's mind. Is chat GPT going to take my job? Hmm. Now, before I go any further, I have to tell you, I had dinner with some friends this past week in Phoenix. Uh, he's an orthopedic surgeon, former Navy SEAL, and she works in, his, in the office. And she's also a lawyer, by the way. Hmm. And I said, so what do you guys think about chat GPT? And they both looked at me like, what is that? Oh, <gasps> Really? Yes, oh. I was just astounded by that. So if you don't know what chat GPT is... Uh, you just need to try it, okay? <laughs> it's openai.com and just go to ChatGPT, sign in, sign up. Uh, we'll give you a hint that if you sign in using your Gmail account, you will get a uh, pass in quicker than if you use your email address. That's been my experience. And so basically, you can ask ChatGPT anything that you want to know about to do and it will do it. And it has a lot of people freaked out about their jobs. So Goldman Sachs did a study and they found that ChatGPT could impact 300 million jobs around the world. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Isn't that crazy? So let's take a look at the top 10 jobs. Uh, first up, tech jobs. Okay, we're talking about programmers, engineers, data analysts. Uh, even OpenAI is thinking of replacing some of its engineers with chat GPT. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Isn't that crazy? Uh, media jobs. Can all of us just raise our hands? Yes. Okay. Here we are. Yes. Media jobs. Journalists, writers, content creators. 
Uh, ChatGPT is going to get to a point where it's going to be able to just spit out anything that you want it to write. And I will tell you, I've been using ChatGPT not to write anything, but to get some research. And sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> just to, and, and I noticed this morning when I was using it that they have this big old disclaimer on the bottom right now. It says, uh, Chad GPT is not always 100% correct. Like, oh, <laughs> knew that. Uh, legal work can analyze mountains and mountains of legal data, legal research, document review, think paralegals. Uh, market research analysts, of course, it can take in a lot of data and spit out data. Teachers. Right. Oh, teachers. Uh, I don't think it's going to replace teachers entirely. I think we need that face to face yeah. interaction. Absolutely. Uh, finance jobs talking about fraud detection, risk assessment, portfolio management. It's just the beginning. Uh, traders. Yes. Hmm. Stock traders, because AI can analyze and execute those orders faster than anything else. Graphic designers. Oh, mm. yeah, this is a big one. Uh, talking about Dolly and Stable Fusion, accountants. Uh, yeah, my accountant, he's a real dynamo, let me tell you. No, he's, you know what? No, I would say that if he was sitting right here. He's just like, he is like the <laughs> dullest guy ever. Okay. Right? Is he a good accountant, though? Yes. But he's a great accountant. There well, you go. You know, yeah. every once in a while I'll say, come on, you know, let's, uh, you know, show me that smile. I know you got it. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you know? Kim just cat calling her accountant. <laughs> exactly. I, I feel like you've uh, said like every industry so far. Yeah. Jeez. Wait, there's more. There's <gasps> one more. Uh, customer service agents. Ooh. Yes. Chatbots, virtual assistants. Uh, so even your friendly customer service agent may be out of a job soon. Uh, but, you know, think of the upsides. People won't have to work in factories anymore because mm -hmm. they're going to have AI, machine learning, robotics that's going to do all that. And I know a guy who lost three fingers in a horrific work accident. I do. Uh, he asked his doctor if he'd, able, if he'd ever be able to drive with that hand again. And the doctor said, um, I wouldn't count on it. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry. Okay. Horrendous. <laughs> Okay, okay, that was too dark humor. <laughs> yeah, back to back. <laughs> Two in a row. Okay. We need something nice. <laughs> okay, Matt, help us. Okay. Take us into nice dumb, please. You know, I, I've always found this to be true that as you get older, it gets harder to make new friends. You know, it's really easy to make new friends in high school, in college, but once you're out in the working world, you know, you have your coworkers and stuff like that, but you know, you don't have those community circles where you can make new friends. And this is even more true for people that have mental disabilities, people with Down syndrome, autism, that kind of thing. And that's exactly what one mother found. And she actually made an attempt to try to change it. So Donna Herter lives in Minnesota and she has a 24 year old son who still lives with her who has Down syndrome. And he had been complaining to her for months that he had no friends and why wouldn't any of his friends hang out with him. And he'd actually go to GameStop, to Walmart and hang out in the video game section oh, and ask people to no. come and then hang out with him and play video games with him. And nobody would. And he couldn't really understand why. And so he was telling his mom as he's all depressed. And so she was like, I have to do something about this. So she went on Facebook and she made an innocuous post that was like, hey, my son is really in need of friends. I'm willing to pay you $80 for two hours to come over once a week and hang out with him. And she's an wow. overnight nurse. So she made the post and then put her phone in the locker and went about her evening. The next morning when she was getting off work, she went in her locker, pulled the phone out, looked at her phone. She had 5,000 comments oh. on that post. Now, oh this is gosh. from How great a is that? myriad of different kinds of people. So it's parents who are trying to give her advice, parents of other kids with disabilities. It's parents trying to ask her for advice on what to do with their kids with disabilities. But the majority is of people and volunteers saying that they would love to hang out with this guy. They would be more than willing, don't even need to be paid at all, and oh. they want to do it. So at first, she said she began to panic. She was like, oh, okay, <laughs> 5,000. She's like, oh, my gosh. But yes. she thought it through and she decided, okay, I'm going to try to do this the smartest way possible. So what she did was she narrowed it down and narrowed it down and narrowed it down until she came to seven. And she had phone interviews with these seven guys and they all were great. And now each one of them comes over once a week and hangs out with this kid and plays video <laughs> games with them. And they become really, really good friends. But that's not even the best part of the story. So because of the popularity of this post, 
this kid, his name is Christian. He became a local celebrity in his little town in Minnesota. <laughs> he was able to go bowling with local Marines. He went out to dinner with the local firefighters. He even was made honorary mayor for the day of the small town. <laughs> really? So, oh my it, gosh, yeah. this is crazy. I know, it's so it's heartwarming. Fabulous. And it's always, you know, we can all call social media what it is. Most of the time, it's a dumpster fire. You know, it is just <laughs> trash over here, trash over there. But every once in a while, you hear one of these stories that just, it, it can really bring people together. That's so lovely. You know, I, you know, I was just thinking that, and maybe just because this is the way my, my, my mind works, is that what if there was an app? Right. right. Where if you had a disabled son or daughter and kind of the same situation, people could volunteer to come over and then you could vet them. I mean, I know that there's care.com, of course, but this sure. is like this may be something different. Hmm. I think so that anybody because, who's listening, you can do that. Yeah, I think that it was because it was just a single person and it wasn't an app, then it wasn't immediately hit on by like That's scammers true. and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So it, yeah. it was more of a genuine kind of thing, which is why it became oh, so I love nice. That. Well, that's an awesome story, but we have to switch gears and whew, bad news. Allie's <laughs> arrived. Sorry. Oh my gosh. I'm here and I'm here to talk about QR codes. You know what a QR code is, right? You've scanned one before, I'm sure. They're those little boxes. They're made up of like black and white dots. They kind of look like little mazes. You can scan them to open a menu. You've probably done that in the past couple of years. Um, I just saw one the other day on a pest control truck that was like, if you want service, <laughs> scan cool. this. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, good idea, cool. right? Um, a website, an app, it can open up anything on your phone. And the big bonus is you don't have to type in a URL. That is a bonus for you because it's annoying to type in a URL. And it's a bonus for uh, criminals because they can very easily hide behind what looks like, oh, this will take me to an app or a site or whatever. Um, but it takes you exactly where they want you to go. And there are a few ways that these scams are spreading. One of them is on parking meters and parking lots. Mm. This has become common in a lot of places. Instead of putting money in the meter, okay, you can use a card maybe, but in some places, you can only use your phone to do it. And so you scan the QR code. But what you might not realize is some jerk came by and slapped a new sticker mm. on top of the actual QR code that you should scan. And it takes you to a website that seems like the one you need to pay on, right? So you put in your credit card information and there you go. You just hand it over your financial info to somebody. Um, people are doing this at gas stations. Uh, again, there's this draw usually of, sometimes it's, I have to do this. I have to pay to park. Uh, so what am I gonna do? Gas stations, a uh, common one is, you know, they might have signs up that are scan and you'll get a discount or scan to blah, blah, blah. You do it don't realize somebody has come and put a sticker over that. So it's really tricky because these places where, you know, it, you think you can trust it because this, this is a real sign from the gas station, right? Uh, it's really easy for somebody to print these stickers and put them on. So your first step, um, not even a tech step, right? Just run your finger. If it's a, a parking meter or a sign, run your finger over it and feel if it seems like this is a sticker or part of the sign. If it's a sticker, Hmm, red flag, right? Um, and then once you do get to the site, so maybe it seems fine, you get there. My, my advice would be if you are paying for parking, so first go to, if there's another way to do it, sometimes it'll have like, you know, the city's website or the town or whatever, and you can just go there directly instead of scanning. Do that. Uh, if you can't do that, I would go to your city or town's website just look around a little bit. What does the logo look like? You know, if you've never been there before, um, yeah. okay, you get an idea for it. And then scan the code. Does it match? And yes, scammers are actually pretty good at making websites <laughs> that do match and do look legitimate. So you're going to have to use your eagle eyes. Make sure you don't see any, you know, weird typos, any weird logos. Um, do they have the official logo? What's in the footer of the website? All that kind of stuff. Um, but it's a it's a wacky wild world out there. Yeah. Those QR codes can lead anywhere. You know, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people realize how easy it is to make a QR code. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh my gosh. Essentially, yeah, I mean, all you do, you just go to QR Code Monkey, right? Yeah, and anybody can do you, it. Yeah. Yeah, anybody can do it. And you can just put a web press up and then it just spits out that QR code. So you don't have to be like some major mastermind. No, <laughs> you have to know barely anything right. about technology to do this. This is so easy. You don't have to know how to do anything. So yeah, you can go to a site. Um, 
print it out and then, you know, you're out in the world slapping your <laughs> your fake stickers on things. So be That's careful. a good idea, though, to just run your finger over it to see yeah. if it is, in fact, a sticker, just yeah. to feel that. You know. All right. So, you know what? You were bad news, but, you know, that was good stuff. So yeah. we're going to give you a pass right there. Helpful. That was good. That Helpful. was really good. All right. Coming up, I have some chat GPT tools that you might want to use. Uh, Matt's going to talk about renaming your router. Allie has some neat tips to that you – Allie has some neat tips on how to use your phone when it's powered – Wait, how was this? Has some neat tips on how to use your phone when it's powered down. What when is it dies. That? That okay. Uh, Allie has some neat tips about what to do when your phone dies. And, of course, we have a joke at the end. And who's on duty for that this week? I am. It's okay. pretty good. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to go low. I'm going to go low. Uh, I, I think it's uh, one of those you're going to go, <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> like a six. Like a six or 6.5. It's pretty All good. Right, it's, a solid, it's a solid six. Yeah. So. Um, you may not want to hang around for that, but there's a lot more that you should. So stay right where you are. Hey, we're so thrilled to have you with us today and every single day. And if you have not jumped on the Commando 2.0 newsletter bandwagon, what the heck are you waiting for? Okay, over 400,000 folks get our emails every single day. And the newsletter, Allie, I saw the ratings this morning. I think we have 20,932 thumbs up. Ooh. And 620 thumbs down. So yeah. I think the odds are that um, they like them. What do you think? I yes. think you're going to give it a thumbs up. Yep. And so make sure that you check it out right now at getkim.com. And if you used to get the newsletters and you hated them because they were ugly and they were full of ads and clicks and, you know, we got that. We changed it from top to bottom. So you can check it out. The new versions over at getkim.com. That's getkim.com. All right, so I'm sticking on the chat GPT bandwagon, okay? And this is part of the show where we like to talk about some tips. And a lot of people are wondering, like, you know, aside from chat GPT and just using that or Bing's chat GPT, which, oh, my gosh, 100 million users since February on Bing. Wow. Incredible. Isn't that That's cool. Crazy. Wow. I wish we could have that. <laughs> million people over at commando.com maybe we need to come up with something like you know ali you know maybe you need to take one for the team you're awfully cute and <laughs> you have a sexy voice so just a little a couple of bikini shots what do you think perfect just, yeah oh. do okay. i get all the money personally uh no uh, <laughs> we're gonna have to let's talk offline all right okay, okay. how about you matt <laughs> hey if the price, second choice. If the price is right, Matt's willing. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> Buddy talk. All right, Duolingo uh, is a chat GPT tool, and now it's going to help you learn Spanish. Have something like explain my answer. Uh, then you can know why your response was right or wrong, and you have some real-time chats. And so if you're trying to learn a foreign language, which I've been trying to learn Spanish my entire life, and I just can't seem to. <laughs> uh, is that maybe you can want to maybe you want to check out Duolingo. Uh, Expedia AI now lets you book a trip anywhere. It recommends local sites, things for you to do, cuisines, restaurants, and helps you find flights and car rentals. Uh, and Grammarly, which, you know, I use a lot. But I will tell you, they have this new AI. I don't know if you've checked it out, but it, it has this new AI option. And I don't know, maybe it was just like me. But I was like, it said, well, would you like AI to do this? And I'm like, oh, sure, why not? I'd love to have AI take a look at a whole USA Today column. <laughs> and it just like tore it all apart and But <laughs> didn't make point. it better? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it just, so it's just not quite there yet. But speaking of AI, you know, I used to have a self-driving car, you know, that Tesla with full self-driving mode. And I, before I sold it, I added Microsoft Word to the AI program so that this way it could write its own autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Woof. <laughs> it's, you know what? You guys are rough today. <laughs> Because when I was writing these, I was busting <laughs> myself up. Okay, so uh, Matt, save us again, once yeah. again. You know, Kim, you've talked about this multiple times, and every time I hear you, I'm like, I bet you there's people that don't know how to do this. So how to change the way name of your Wi-Fi and the password for your Wi-Fi. This is super important, especially if you get one of those rentals from your ISP you need to change the name and the password because think about how easy it is for them to maybe hack into Cox or Comcast and just get a bunch of those pre-made passwords and names and then they can just hack all those Wi-Fi's. It's, it, it makes it really dangerous. So 
I just went through this where I changed mine. So I thought I'd share with you guys. It's really, really simple. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to go find your router. You're going to pick it up and look at the back or the bottom. On there, pick you'll it see up. it says, you got to pick it up. We got to pick it up first. Not just going to see it. You got to pick it up. Pick it up. <laughs> on the bottom, you'll see something that says admin URL. It'll be on the bottom or the right or IP. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take that. It usually will start with 192 period and then another number 0.1.0, whatever. Take that. Go put it in your browser and you'll immediately get a login screen for Cox or Comcast or whatever you have. You put in your information and if you don't have that information, call them and they can set it up for you. It's pretty simple. Once you have that, you type it in and then it'll pull up a list of options and you'll see change default SSID. You click that and then it'll allow you to change it to whatever you want. I just went through this whether I just went through this recently because I moved and I was trying to change my Wi-Fi after 10 years of having it as something that was um, kind of embarrassing. Uh, it was <laughs> about video games. We're not going to get too much into it. But <laughs> what was it, Matt? Come I on. think, you know, Come uh, on, Matt. I'm in my 30s. It, it was Final Fantasy, blah, 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 you know. <laughs> But I thought, oh, I'm Hot in my 30s. Guy, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I thought I'm in my 30s now. Uh, that's a little embarrassing. I should change it to something more professional. Um, so I did this and I was like, that's really easy. I think the people over at Commando could really use a refresher yeah. on how to do this. Well, you know, that's a good one. I, I've told you guys a story that when I was setting up the Wi-Fi here at the house in Santa Barbara is that I say, I'm going to give it a good name. So I called it and I, I didn't tell Barry what it was. So I, I just I just put it in. I figured you know, when he comes around, I'll go ahead and just set him up. And so like 15 minutes later, it comes over and he's like, he's like all in a panic and he's running towards me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what the heck? And he's like. Kim, Kim, there's somebody here who has the Wi-Fi network name of FBI surveillance van. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, dude, that's us. He's like, why would you name it like that? I'm like, because I, I thought it was funny. The I, FBI know. would be smart enough to do like Final Fantasy Hot Boy or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there's always this trend of people like naming their Wi-Fi networks like funny things. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like the, the land stops here or, you know, whatever it may be. It's, it's always kind of a, a cool thing to do that. Um, all right. That was great, Matt. Yeah. Um, Allie, what do you have on board? Well, this is a situation that has happened to me Uh, countless times you're out and about and look down and your phone is at like, you know, 4% battery. Uh, If you are that person too, we can do better, (laughs) first of all. Uh, Okay, first, first plan. If you are in your car, plug it in. You probably have a way to charge your phone in your car. If you can stick around your car for a little bit longer and let it charge, do that. Get it to like 10% or something. If you can't, uh, what can you do in your settings? Okay, your phone's power saver settings, uh, these come by different names depending on what phone you have, but that's really your best bet. It kind of just does everything for you and puts your phone into, okay, I'm gonna use the least amount of power possible so it will last longer. Um, It also makes your phone a little less um, fun to use. (laughs) Like in some cases, it'll make it black and white. It'll restrict you from using certain apps. So at least you're not gonna like accidentally start scrolling, right? Uh, If you don't wanna do that, dim your screen. Um, by the way, your phone will lo- last longer just in general if you have it on dark mode because it doesn't need to work so hard to keep this whole screen bright. Uh, you can also turn off your location services or your GPS if you're not using it. And then if you're really desperate, just put it in airplane mode. And that way, if you really need to make a call or send a text or something, you can just turn it back on. But good news, if your phone dies, it can actually still do some stuff because it reserves a tiny little bit of power even after the screen shuts off. Um, We're just gonna be talking about iPhones here because Android manufacturers are all kind of cagey about this. And you know, Apple likes to say, oh my gosh, we're so great, look Mm -hmm. at all these things. So it's just easier to talk about their features sometimes. Um, One is Find My. So if your phone dies, you can still locate it. Uh, It will have that last location in there. You can still ping the phone. It will still make sounds, all that stuff, even if it's dead, which is really cool. And then if you have your payment card, so say you use Apple Pay to buy things, you can do that if your phone dies. So don't panic if you're at the store and you use your phone to pay for something and you realize, oh no, it's dead, you can still use it, which is super cool. Um, You can also still, if you use your phone to unlock or start your car, you can do that too. Because wouldn't that suck if your phone was dead and you couldn't start your car? Yeah. Um, Now for this, uh, for the payment and uh, the car stuff, you need to set up something called express mode. This is not 
turned on automatically. So you have to go do it. Uh, we have the steps over on commander.com. So if you have an iPhone and uh, you're like me and you're not great at charging your phone, search express mode and you can find the steps to turn that on. Mm. And you certainly should. <laughs> You know, uh, that's really a good tip in and of itself, is that if you're not sure how to do something or where it is, mm -hmm. is just use search. I mean, mm -hmm. on your whatever device it is. Like, totally. I don't know how I did it, but on my iPad, everything was was dark and it was supposed to be light and it's during the day and it's like it's orange and not blue. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, I don't know what I hit. I think it was Barry on my iPad, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to totally blame him. Uh, and so I called John. I'm like, John, there's got to be like some setting. He's like, oh, you inverted. I'm like, yeah. oh, you're right. I inverted the colors. I just search for invert. Boom. Love right that. Right there. Done. You know, but speaking of Barry, you know, he was giving a speech the other day at the Yacht Club. And uh, he asked me to record it. And I was like, all right, you know, because he, he's always critiquing himself. And so, you know, and then my phone died just right there. So I guess I'll never hear the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> that hey, good. listen, if you like, did I redeem myself? Yeah, that was good. good. You're back. All right. All right. If you like quick tips like this, these little how-tos, digital life hacks, make sure that every single day, if you love this podcast, you're going to love our daily tech updates. So wherever you get your podcast, just search for Commando with a K. You get a 60-second news story and a 60-second life hack that you're going to use time and time again. And they're absolutely free. Yes. Okay. Stay with me on this. So yes, command with a K wherever you get your podcast. All right. Coming up, if you invested a thousand dollars in Apple in 1998, what kind of return would you be getting today? Uh, Matt's going to talk about video game speed runs and what exactly that is. And Allie has a great way to organize your browser profiles. And then Matt has a mediocre joke at the end. Hey, so, sorry. So, hey you might as <laughs> just hang on. Uh, just another quick reminder that if you're not getting our newsletters, yes, nag, nag. <laughs> <laughs> so if every single one of you who are listening right now, if you just sign up for the newsletter, you don't even have to read it, okay? Then I can stop telling you to sign up for them, okay? But you're going to want to read them. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing right now, just stop. I didn't say tuck and roll. I want you to stop <laughs> and go to getkim.com. Once again, stop and go to getkim.com. All right, so here's our what the heck headline of the week. If you invested a thousand dollars in Apple, what it would what it would be worth today? Okay, so Apple is now worth um, more than any of us combined, mm -hmm. uh, two point seven two trillion dollars. Oh, a trillion! <sighs> yes, yeah, that was with the big T. Uh, but you might not realize that back in 1985, Steve Jobs he was kicked out of the company. And at the time, they were struggling to beat out IBM and Compaq Computer and also Microsoft. And a lot of people said that Steve Jobs was just not the nicest person to hang around with. Well, he was driven. He was creative. He was probably OCD. I don't know this. I never met the man. But it just seems to me to, that this would have all the characteristics of that. So 1997, Apple's not doing so hot and losing money, and Steve Jobs says, okay, I'm coming back to the company, and I'm going to be making big changes. So in 1998, that's when they announced the product, the iMac. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, the all-in-one computer, it had all these funky colors, yeah. if you might remember that. Yep. And then not long after that, the company reported its first profitable quarter in three years. <laughs> Isn't that something? Awesome. So. At that time in 1998, Apple stock was worth 23 cents a share. Oh, huh. you know, I, that's that something, why didn't I buy any? Why didn't I? I mean, I was busted, but I could have afforded some of that. Oh. OK, so if you had a thousand dollars and you put that into Apple stock that day, today you would have four thousand three hundred and forty eight shares of Apple. OK, oh. that would be worth. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Oh man! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. Which is a seventy-five thousand percent return. That's wow. pretty good. <laughs> wow! Wow! So I sent this over to my Morgan Stanley boys. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, dudes? Hey! <laughs> yeah. I said, "What are you guys like screwing around with like six percent for? Come on! <laughs> I mean, really?" 
market. Now, oh. here's some. Here's okay. Speaking of stocks, here's one that the next time you're out and about, just pull up, just bring up the the topic of stocks because I, I I saw this one actually on Twitter and I thought it was so funny. Okay, you you remember the COVID nineteen toilet paper craze? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember mm-hmm. that? Everybody was just stockpiling toilet paper. Okay. The COVID-19 toilet paper craze was a lot like the stock market crash of 1929. Okay. This time, instead of everybody dumping their stocks, (laughs) they were stocking for dumps. (laughs) (laughs) We always appreciate poop humor here. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. All right. So, Matt, you're our very own Internet scout, as I like to say. So yeah. what's going on with the Internet? What's this? What is a speed run anyway? Yeah. Every week you say, oh, Matt's going to tell us and make us smart. Well, this is exactly why I'm here. So <laughs> we're going to talk about speed running. And I know you're sitting there thinking, what is speed running video games? And why have I heard kids talk about this? Well, after I get done telling you all about this, go find somebody younger than 20 and tell them what you know. And they're going to be like, wait, how do you even know that that exists? They're going to be very <laughs> impressed. So speed running is the act of beating a video game as quickly as possible. And this usually utilizes glitches or hacks or what have you to try to beat it super fast. Okay. Right. And it has been around for a long time, but it's recently in the last decade or so really started to gain traction. Now, it originally started out when Activision, yes, the video game company Activision, had a newsletter. Speaking of newsletters, you should sign up for our newsletter (laughs) over at getkim.com. But (laughs) I digress. They had a newsletter and it was... You're you're learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, okay. Back in 1981, they had a newsletter where they would send out stuff about the new new video games coming out and whatever. And they had a, a part of it where people could send in pictures, actual physical pictures, remember those? <laughs> actual physical pictures of their screen from them playing a video game and them going through it as quickly as possible. Oh my gosh, ancient screenshot, wow. right? incredible. And they would put it in the newsletter. <laughs> well, this really started to take off with the advent of the internet, obviously, and people started really posting them on different forums and channels all over the internet. Eventually, Twitch became a thing. Mm -hmm. Now, Twitch is where they live stream themselves playing video games and they would live stream themselves playing old school games like Quake and Doom, which are from the early 90s, late 80s. And these began to gain a lot of traction. Finally, a big website called speedrunning.com was introduced in 2014 and this became the official place where people could track their speed runs. <laughs> so whether you're playing a Mario game or a Zelda game or what have you, people would record themselves trying to beat it as quickly as possible and then post it on there and then they would get ranked. So there's rankings. I went on there today. There are hundreds of millions of users, millions oh of different gosh. records for every single game you can possibly think of. If you, if there was a free game that McDonald's released in a Happy Meal, <laughs> there's people that have played it to try to speed run it as quickly as possible. I guarantee it. 12 seconds. E- exactly. Now, you might be thinking, well, what's the normal time to beat that video game? Yeah. There's actually a website called How Long to Beat. Now, this website will, you can type in any video game you can think of and it'll say, oh, on average, this takes 12 hours or on average, this takes 20 hours to beat. Well, to give you an example of how fast speedrunners are, I went on and compared the speedrun and the normal time of the Mario 64, Super Mario 64 for the N64 system was released back in 1997. Classic. Classic game. Now, according to how long to beat, it takes 12 hours to beat the game. The okay. fastest speed run took six minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> no yep. way. Yep. And I actually went and watched it on YouTube because it's on YouTube. Obviously. And it's only six minutes. And all they do is they like, gl- they try to jump backwards as Mario into the wall and it like, and then shoots them up the stairs and they're on the final boss and that's it. <gasps> Oh, that's cheating. Well, but <laughs> that's it's speed finding, running, Kim. It's finding glitches. <laughs> Oh, I see. All right. yeah, you, know, yeah. that's in, you know what? That's cool. So now that's we crazy. all know what speed running is. There that's great. Hey, hey, listen, if you're not following us on social media, you're really missing out on Facebook.com slash Kim Commando, Twitter.com slash Kim Commando, Instagram.com slash Kim Commando. And I will tell you that I went back and forth posting this picture on Instagram yesterday. And it's a picture of the back of my Ferrari. Because I'm showing my license plate, no net 30, which means 
if you can't pay for cash, then you shouldn't be buying things, right? Because you, you don't offer terms. And it's really interesting to me to see the comments. Um, there was one comment I actually deleted only because they used a whole bunch of bad words mm. in it. But it was, they were saying like, uh, and there's only one bad comment out of like 300. But this one person, they, they said like, I can't even afford to buy eggs. And you're giving away a $2 fanny pack on your show. And you're showing this car. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, you know what? I've worked my butt off my entire life. Okay. <laughs> and so, but I just think that's interesting. And so if you want to see it, it's Instagram.com slash Kim Commando. And feel free to leave. You can leave a nasty comment. I don't care. Because <laughs> there are all these people that are now saying, like, this is inspirational. I'm going to do this. They should teach this in middle school, you know, instead of buy now, pay later. You know, yeah. I'm just got to buy Gosh, it now. Seriously, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, still to come, Allie's going to show us how to organize our browser profiles. And if you don't know what they are, it's not speed running. And Matt has just a hilarious, yeah. oh, knockout, <laughs> funny joke at the end that you just don't want to miss. Liar, liar, hair's on fire. <laughs> you will chuckle a little bit. <laughs> All right, you better not be missing out on the Monday through Thursday podcast because let me tell you, they're perfect when you're on the go, you're out for a walk, you're driving, you're just chilling at home because – me and Allie and all of our callers and guests, we are your virtual companions. So think about it. So if you're sitting there alone, you're not alone. It's, you know, you have me, you have you and a podcast makes three. So just make sure that wherever <laughs> you get your podcast, just search for Commando with a K and get Kim Commando today. It's a solid 30 minutes of tech know-how every single day. And we had a testimonial that I shared with you, Allie, the other day. And what the person said, like, what did they say? It was great information. What did they say, like, oh, about the jokes? I loved that. Let me find like, it real quick. It was like she gives great information, and I think it's time well spent. And every once in a while, I think I laugh at the jokes. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. It, it was like there's a glowing endorsement. <laughs> All right, so Allie, you're here to upgrade our tech life. I said that this is the most underrated browser feature, and I'm going to stand by it. Ooh. Okay, browser profiles. I bet most people don't use these. Um, I'll explain what it is in just a second. Maybe you've heard it because everyone, including us over at commander.com, started talking about this a couple years ago when everybody started to go work from home because it's a nice way to keep your work life and your personal life separate on your computer. Basically, a browser profile is what it sounds like. It stores your bookmarks, your passwords, your search history, your extensions, any other settings. Um, and you can make separate ones for each profile you want. So it makes a lot of sense, right, to have one for work, to have one for personal. So you don't get those two, you know, you don't have to log into all the same accounts. You can just kind of start fresh every time you open your browser. But maybe you don't have a job that you work from home. Maybe you've already done that. There are more uses for this that I think are really smart. Um, by the way, in just about every browser, you can have as many profiles as you want. So it doesn't have to just be work and home. It can be all kinds of stuff. And here are some ideas. Uh, and, you know, while I was researching this and putting together ideas, I was like, oh, why don't I have all of these? And I have some, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upgrade too. Okay, hobbies. Um, I don't know about you two. When I go in on a new hobby, I go in... There's a lot of tabs. There's a lot of bookmarks. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of research. Um, okay, what has been a what has been a new recent hobby of yours? Oh, I'm actually starting one. Uh, by that I mean all the stuff I bought on Amazon will be here this weekend. I decided that I'm going to make fancy little cakes, like six inch <laughs> layer cakes. Uh, I'm going to learn to Are decorate you? them. Yeah, it's going to be so fun. That's adorable. You know who's really big at that is hmm. Jackie Farnbrook. Oh. oh. No, she makes the, she uses, I don't know, starts with an F, like fond or something. Fondant, Fondant. yeah. Yeah, and she makes the best cake. <gasps> so if you ever need a hand, Amazing. I was just texting with her last night, um, just know that you can just tap right into her. That's cool. That's a great hobby. That's wonderful. Well, wouldn't it be great if I had my baking profile, because then all the sites that I like are bookmarked right there. And the nice thing about this is, you know, if you have a lot of different hobbies or if you have a lot of you know, um, things that you bookmark for work or whatever it is, those lists get really long and it's hard to find anything you want. And let's be honest, none of us do a really good job of putting everything in like perfect folders. So profiles for your hobbies. 
Another one that's really cool, travel. If you are planning a big trip, why not have a profile for that trip? Uh, you can keep. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. You can keep all your sign-ins. You can keep your, um, you know, keep your tab open with uh, the hotel page so they don't lose it. Oh, yeah. And this is a nice way too. Again, you don't have to close everything all the time because you close your browser w- down and then you can have this stuff just start up when you, um, when you open it again. And then the last one, this is smart, a clean profile. So you want as little stuff in here as possible. Think of this as the one you're gonna use for going to your bank website or anything mm. else financial. So no browser extensions, don't log into your social media there. Um, you know, everything is really siloed off in these different profiles. So keep one that you don't do anything else really in. Of course, your best bet, if you can have like a Chromebook or another computer that you can do your banking on, awesome, you should do that. If not. Make a clean profile, only do it there. So don't do that on your your baking profile or your travel one. Um, If you want steps for this, now it is super simple in most browsers. You'll see that little icon. If you've added a picture, you'll Mm -hmm. see your little face uh, or sometimes it's your initials. You just click that and there'll be an option to add a profile. So if you need more help, we are going to write about this over on commander.com so you can search there. But go forth and profile. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I like that. That's a good idea. I, I'm going to try that next time I next time I embark upon a trip. I will yeah. have to after I get my I mean, as soon as I get my cornea transplant done, <laughs> then I'll yeah. then go. I'll start embarking on a trip. Yes. All right. So it's the big moment, Matt. <clears throat> I'm sorry to tell you. Okay. Um, you know we've been you know people have been hanging on the entire podcast and maybe somebody even just like fast forward over everything <laughs> just to just get for the to joke. This yeah. Of us. I mean yes. I wouldn't blame them. It's a it's a good one. Um, you know I tried to keep the theme. Of video games, so stay with me here. <clears throat> Once upon a time, in the Mushroom Kingdom, Mario and Peach were the perfect couple. They'd been together for many years, and everyone thought they'd be together forever. They went on adventures together, saved the kingdom from danger, and always supported each other through thick and thin. However, as time passed, things started to change. Mario began to spend more and more time on adventures, leaving Peach alone in the castle for long periods of time. <laughs> Peach felt lonely and neglected and started to wonder if Mario really cared about her as much as he used to. One day when Mario returned from an adventure, Peach decided to confront him. She says, Mario, why are you acting so different and leaving me alone for so long? Mario says, Peach, I'm really sorry, but I think we're going to have to break this off. Shocked, Peach says, but Mario, why? Did I do something wrong? Mario shakes his head. Do you not like my hair? Do you not think I'm beautiful anymore? Mario, no, Mario says. Then you have to tell me, what's, what's going on? Why, why, why don't you want to be with me? And he says, it's a not the you, it's a me, a Mario. <laughs> That was actually, that was more than a six. That was yeah. an eight. That was, yeah. That Undersell was and over deliver. <laughs> that was really good. Good one, Matt. All right. So coming up on Kim Commando today, next week, or if you want to listen to the show on your local radio station, you can always do that or maybe catch it inside the Commando community. Here's what's coming up. Uh, we're going to be talking about this uh, this big Google I.O. conference and all the new products that they've announced. We're going to tell you how you wipe what you search for in your browser and on social media. Oh, we, this is so fun. You're going to love this. Free finance calculators. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Said everybody. So you can plan for your retirement and see your net worth. And again, that's Monday through Thursday on Kim Commando Today coming up. So you don't want to miss that. And also, I have a story about... Um, how a Hawaiian tourist went into the harbor after following their GPS. Um, <laughs> then I'm also going to be talking to a Wall Street Journal reporter who wrote this great story about parlaying and an online gambling and how oh, neat. you really oh. can't win as much as you think you might be able to win because of parlaying. And then also I'm going to speak to somebody who's getting a job as a prompt engineer. And they're making about $300,000 a year. Whoa. And uh, they are helping ChatGPT come up with different prompts so they can go back to you and ask you questions wow. instead of it being cool. like one way street. All right. Before we leave you, it's always like before we leave, we always like to say like one great thing that you can walk away from this entire podcast aside from Matt's Mario joke. <laughs> um, so what do you think, Al? What's the best thing they need to do now? If you have an iPhone, you should turn on express mode. That way you're never going to be uh, out of luck if your phone dies and you still need to pay for something. So you can just search in your settings for express mode. You can also search commando.com for that if you need a full step-by-step walkthrough. 
How about you, Matt? You know, change the name of your Wi-Fi. Uh, make it something <laughs> funny. Uh, think about creative copy Kim. ways. Yeah, copy Kim. Yeah. Do something cool. Yeah, it's easy and it keeps you safe. Yeah, just don't be boring. Yeah. I mean, I have um, a couple of friends. They named theirs RuPaul's Penthouse or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's not funny. what that is. Uh, just a quick reminder that you can always drop us your questions over on the website, hitcommando.com, and in the upper right-hand corner, there's a link that says email Kim, and you can uh, also drop us an email to podcasts at commando.com, and make sure they tell at least three family members and friends about our podcast because they're going to love them too. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you again on the next podcast. <laughs>